All right. Hello, all, and welcome to Edison Speaker Series focused on student success. My name is Dr. Jazz Jackson, and I serve as a Chief Student Success Equity Inclusion Officer. Within the last two years, the university has continued to expand our student services to meet the ever-changing needs of our students, the higher education market, our strategic vision, and our ongoing accreditation efforts. We are committed to create an environment that nurtures adult learners and transformation. In the spirits of these efforts, my role was created, which oversees the Center for Student Success. The center was created to deliver a more comprehensive support to promote student retention, persistence, degree completion, and career attainment. Student success and equity are key priorities for the Center for Student Success. The Center of Student Success encompasses the student success team, the Office of Academic Advising, including general population, active duty military, and military populations, the Office of Student Accessibility Services, the Office of Academic Integrity, Tutoring Services, the Office of Equity and Inclusion, the Office of Career Development, and Mentor Administration. Combining all of these efforts have allowed us to build synergy across and around the core functions of student support, satisfaction, and persistence therefore allowing for us to intensify and streamline our student support efforts to connect our, stu our enrolled students to the right resources at the right time during every phase of their academic life cycle. Today, we will highlight our recent addition to the Center for Student Success, which en has enabled us to help our students by providing the right resources at the right time. I'll turn it over to Steve to provide an overview of the peer support program. All right, thank you, Dr. Jackson. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Steve Weinblatt, Assistant Director of Student Success and oversee the university's peer support program, which is what we are highlighting today as part of the Edison Speaker Series. The peer support program was approved as part of the Opportunity Meets Innovation Challenge Grant in the summer of 2021 and was officially launched this past November. This program provides students a great opportunity to connect with peer tutors and peer coaches who are current and former TESU students and therefore are better positioned to relate to, empathize with, and support these students than traditional academic assistants outside of the university. The program contains English and writing and math peer tutors to assist our students with essential course content to help develop and fine tune skills for academic success at the university. The program's peer coaches help our students transition to TESU and provide support, guidance, and strategies for overcoming any challenges during their journey at the university. This voluntary program is currently available to all active undergraduate students at the university and appears as a course in Moodle, the university's learning management system. This space provides all the information pertaining to the program. We provide a, a variety of options to our students who are seeking assistance, including email, virtual appointments, forum posts, and various webinars. We have an extremely dedicated team with an innate desire to help our students. Today, the program's three peer coaches are on the call and I'm going to provide you a brief bio on each of them first before I turn it over back to Dr. Jackson. So first we have Tanya Jenkins. Tanya has always sought out ways to help within the community, serving as a STEM tutor for various organizations and mentoring and volunteering with groups like Black Girls Code, Unity Care, and Sunnyvale Community Services. Tanya believes that providing opportunities for underrepresented groups is essential, so she actively seeks out partners who can provide educational support, meaningful mentorships, and corporate internships for individuals from these groups. Next, we have Yavanka Brooks. Yavanka is a passionate program administrator of support services for marginalized students, academic advisor, educator, and TESU peer coach on a mission to encourage, enlighten, and help students pursuing a degree help themselves. Although Yavanka considers herself a lifelong learner, she believes the learning process must also include an ongoing process of personal mastery and professional development. Ivanka's passion is to always remain hungry in her quest for knowledge and relentless in pilgrimage. Our third coach is Sherry Ham. Sherry has served to help people in many ways from serving as an ombudsman for her husband's river tender unit in Omaha, Nebraska, to coaching and mentoring staff in her almost 22 years in healthcare. She believes in giving back and works with local organizations and fundraising efforts in her, in her community in Virginia, including Riverside's Make a Difference Fund, the Bay School Community Arts Center, American Lung Cancer Society, and the Alzheimer Association, just to name a few. Again, I can't stress enough how excited we are to have these three peer coaches on the team. On that note, I'm gonna turn it over back to Dr. Jackson to begin the discussion. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve, for the overview and the bios. Now we will do our Q&A with our panelists. If a member of the audience would like to ask any additional questions after we go through our general panelist questions, please type those questions in the Q&A area and we'll be able to ask them at the end. Now let's get started with our first question and we will let Tanya go first. What inspired you to become a part of this team? Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Jackson. There are so many things that led to this point for me. Um, I, too, have been a lifelong learner. I feel that education and just learning something new, whether it's knitting or something more substantive in a different direction, is important to keep us young. I, I, I advocate being young in mind and young in spirit. And so I've always taken online courses. And when I saw the opportunity to pursue a degree with Thomas Edison and joined the, the students here, I realized that it was very different than the other online experiences that I had. So what I decided to do is dig down deep. My kids were in school, so I worked with them and learned that their support helped me. So when I saw this opportunity to help other students, I thought, what better way to um, join a community to help other students thrive and to help myself as well? Because being part of a community, to me, is what drives you forward. And so once I met you, Dr. Jackson, and you, Steve, and I saw how committed you were to making sure that students at this university thrive and are successful and you want them to graduate, I really wanted to be part of the team. One of the things I never told either of you is that even if I didn't get the position, I was going to see what I can do to volunteer. <laughs> so I am so thankful to be part of this community and to help students here. And we're so, so thankful to have you a part of the team. All right, we'll transition to Sherry. Your question, what inspired you to become a part of this team? Well, as my bio said, I think part of my chemistry and makeup is just a desire to help and to make a difference. But if I want to talk a little bit more granular, at my age, coming back to school was eye-opening. I had never taken an online course at all. I spent my first week with Thomas Edison crying. I'll be honest. I even shared that with Steve. I cried a lot that first week. And when this came about, I thought I could make a difference for the students who might be feeling that overwhelming feeling or, you know, not a traditional setting. And I didn't want them to feel alone. So I felt like I could make a difference by being there, having walked that walk and help them alleviate some of the stress of their work life balance. Perfect. Thank you so much. And you are a part of the team, Sherry. Next, we have Yavanka. Oh, thank you. First, I'd like to say good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to thank the panel for um, asking me to be a panelist, as well as I would like to thank our participants who took the time to attend today. So I'll segue into my inspiration. My inspiration is more of a passion um, to provide a, a safe space for students and also to help them with engagement and understand that their school their schooling or academics should be a holistic approach um, through engagement, through mentoring, and coaching. Um, another reason why I feel this program is so important, why I wanted to be a part of it is because, believe it or not, there was two mentors during my graduate program that really mm, went the extra mile with me. Um, and they even helped me with other classes. And when I needed support and recommendations for my own doctoral program, they were right on it for me. As a matter of fact, I got all three recommendations for my doctoral program from my mentors. And they were the one who really sparked and inspired me that you can do this, you have the skill set, just do X, Y, and Z. And they were even willing after I graduated um, with my graduate degree from Thomas Edison to really continually be a support system for me. So that was impactful. And that said something about the, the engagement between the faculty and staff, students and all stakeholders that I wanted, to, I wanted to continue beyond graduating there. Although they didn't have a program for me past my graduate degree, they, I still wanted to be a part of the support in the process. That's part of my, my inspiration. 
Thank you so much, Ivanka, and, uh, and kudos, and thank you for those mentors that help guide and inspire you and support you as you've continued throughout your um, educational journey. All right, well, we will transition to our next question, starting with Sherry. What has been some of your experience being a part of the peer support team? I think um, for me personally, some of the technical things have been um, a lot of what we encounter as coaches. Um, how to navigate the Moodle platform, uh, how to use Kaltura Capture or ProctorU, for example. But beyond that, we've also have a lot of questions about balancing work and life and um, study skills, those kind of things. And through my experience in that, I approached Steve and recognized that we really needed to have, we were doing starting our webinars where we would discuss topics, but I approached Steve and sought out for us to do what we call a pre-term webinar, where we actually offer it to students the Thursday before the start of their classes. And they can come on and we can teach the basics about Moodle, how to register for their exams, introduce them to our program and the details and what we have to offer and our tutors. And then I throw in a little time management and what a commitment to being a student means and how to be successful. We kind of wrap it up with that. And the numbers are growing in attendance. We're getting a good turnout. And then I think the reward from that is to see the students that were in those webinars still continue from term to term with us. So we know we're making a difference by starting them off in the right direction. So. Um, and then on a personal note for me, working with this team has been, uh, I, I can't even begin to tell you what I've learned from each one of them. They all bring different skills and knowledge and experience, and we really support each other. So that's been my positives about being part of this team and what we're doing. Thank you so much, Sherry, and, and just being that innovator and bringing up ideas to be able to support our students. Because you're a student, it's always good to get your insight. All right, we'll transition to Tanya. Yes, this, uh, I have to echo everything Sherry said. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, I'm a current student, so balancing everything, work, my children, family life, school, has been has been challenging, but in such an exhilarating way. And one of the things I look forward to is talking to other students. This program provides an opportunity for engagement with other students. That's one of the things I hope students take away from this. You, this is not the traditional, I go on campus, I sit in a big lecture hall. We've chosen this because it fits our lifestyle. Some of us want a very quiet way to learn. Others want, you know, uh, engagement and they want to talk to people and they might find this challenging. What I've learned and what I've loved about that is talking to students and, and showing them how to engage other students, whether it's through Edison Live, whether it's through um, creating study groups. That is one of the things that has been such, it's been so rewarding students that feel, and, and I know all of us are kind of tuned in a little bit to the news, you find out that during, especially during the pandemic, people were really, really lonely. And this is one of the ways just engaging, you know, talking to a peer mentor, talking to a peer tutor, um, it allows you to see you're not alone. Going back to what Yavanka said, it is engagement at, at a, such a different level, and it, but, but it's what works for you. And so I'm so proud to be part of that. I had a student that he actually said that to me. He's just like, I felt so alone. And thank you for, you know, taking time out to talk to me. And that was both, and if I can say one of the other innovative things that um, just as Sherry was talking about, I'm a, uh, I am a computer programmer. I work in robotics. And so I was allowed to use my STEM um, background to help coach students in computer science. And so I was coaching a student um, who was having a really hard time. He hadn't been in school for, I think he said 30 years and he had not worked with computers in a long time. And so our, um, our progression through our sessions were both coaching and a bit of tutoring. And I'm so thankful that uh, you all allowed me to do that because using my whole self, using every aspect of myself, 
um, and helping the students use every resource that they have within themselves is what will lead to success. So that has been one of the highlights of, of being here. And just one more thing to echo what Sherry said, I've learned so much from all of you. And I feel like part of this team in such a way, I miss you when I don't talk to you. We throw off notes to each other. Um, we support students together. And so I'm so, so thankful. And I love bringing students into an environment like that. Thank you so much, Tanya. So we, we appreciate you being able to leverage your talents in multiple different um, facets here at the university um, and being able to continue to support us as we um, support this isolation that so many people are feeling. And, and one of the things I heard from you is just building a community within this community, not only within the peer support, but outside of the peer support with our other students. All right, Yavanka, now <laughs> we're on to you. Okay, so from from my perspective, um, from a student centered lens, they're experiencing a lot of information overload um, because we service uh, a plethora of student uh, social economic demographics, occupational cognitive learning backgrounds. Um, we are seeing many different things. So information overload is one of them. The technology, um, of course, as everyone said, the platforms, um, just organizational skills, adding layers to their life and not anticipating what the workload requires. But also um, encouraging students to look at the peer support program as, an, as a community of practice. Um, looking at it from that lens that their education is, is going to be, is not a linear journey. It's going to have some ebb and flows and that they need to make space for that. And we kind of, from my lens of mentoring and coaching, I, I include that those six dimensions of just wellness. Because one thing that I have seen uh, consistently is that an element of anxiety, and it could be the, I mean, they could have education down pack, but when you're adding this layer, it does produce some anxiety because it's the different platforms, different expectations from mentors, meeting different people in a classroom setting. One thing I wanted to also add is that because I think that the pandemic has changed so much, people used to think, oh, just online is just boom, that's it, your class, you, you don't want to talk to anybody, but I think that's changing. I, I, that's why I implement six degrees of wellness because we need to look at the student as a whole person. And when we talk to them on Zoom or on the phone, we see that whole person. They wanna talk about more than the subject matter. They wanna talk about what were the precipitants to this anxiety. The course is just a symptom, but there's so many. Now we're not therapists, but we're just trying to teach them some coping skills and academic skills just to bring them back to focus. And then we refer them out if necessary. But I think that um, we, we need to look at it from a different lens, a community of practice with some wellness included. And we need to continue this momentum of, of, of holistic approach to engagement because we're not just getting people online who want to learn. They're coming with many other different issues. Again, we're not, we're not <laughs> a therapist. So, but a lot of times they want to they talk about those things first before they get to that. So those have been my experiences. And once we get through those barriers, we get right into the, the academics and they feel somewhat of relief. So that has been my experience with, with being a peer uh, mentor is that students don't wanna be looked at just as, a, can I say like a, a traditional online learner. They wanna be looked at as a whole student. They're just taking online courses. That doesn't mean they don't need the other supports. They still do. They are still a whole student. And that's the way that we should reframe this. And that's my support. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, give me one second. I think we have an additional question that yeah. relates to this one. Let me ask. Yeah, so we um, do have a question, Jess. I, I perfect, care. I got it. Yeah. Um, so just as a follow-up question for Sherry, how um, how do new students learn about the option of attending the preterm webinar? So um, Steve enrolls all the new students on each term and they get an invitation. Um, typically our coordinator, Kiva, divides that list of students up to all three of us coaches and we send out a personalized email and there's a link for them to join the, the seminar and the session. In fact, we have one tonight. And if you didn't get that link, email us. <laughs> we'll see if Steve can get you in there. <laughs> 
Sounds like a typical TSU university <laughs> support staff for sure. And so one of the things I wanted to capture, um, Yvonka, is essentially you really focused on being able to support the whole student. And so that really embodies um, being able to not only um, listen, but really understand and empathize with the student because sometimes um, they come just just for to have a, a listening ear. And so we appreciate you guys providing that insight. So our next question as we transition is, what has been the most impactful testimony that you guys have received from students while you've assisted them during your journey? We'll start with Yavaka. Uh, there's been several, um, but the most important is is is, is my peers because you never know how well you're doing. You know, you never know how well people perceive you, let alone the students that you're serving. So most of the time, I think what's most impactful is thank you. And a couple of times, people said to me, "Thank you for allowing me to be my authentic self," and that goes back to that seeing them as a a whole student not just focusing on academics, allowing them to kind of flush out what's going on and then allowing them, giving them that space and then going to the academics. So that has been really impactful to my engagements, allow them just to kind of flush it out. What, what's going on? Like, why do you feel like you're having these organizational skills or why, what's the anxiety about it? What's your frustration with the platform? That has been really key. Perfect. We'll transition to Tanya. Same question. Thank you. Um, I will go more to a vignette. <laughs> so, uh, one of one of I had a student, and he was active military, and because of his deployment schedule and his work schedule, he had to extend a course a second time. And you know that's really rare. And he was coming up on the end of his activities with work and he hadn't finished the course. So he actually came to me initially for um, programming help. And as we started discussing and it, you know really I'm, I'm thinking of he's active military, this is someone who is serving our country and and with you know he came with just such a great attitude, just a thank you and you know, if you could just help me with this one thing. And we ended up having many sessions where we spoke about the, the, his responsibilities and the activities he had in other courses. And it became programming sessions. So where we went over code, but it also um, became something where he would schedule his time and he would take a moment for himself and kind of to, to understand the impact of what he had for the country, you know, what he was doing and how we felt about that. You know, I would talk to him and just thank you for, for serving us. He also ended up um, needing help from the coaching side. So I transitioned, what was great about the story was that I transitioned from programming coach to, a, a, you know, the coach that helped him with his, his, his time management, we set out a schedule and it was a daily schedule. You need to get this far in the book. You need to do this thing. You need to have this done. You handed it at this time. He hadn't engaged his mentor and I encouraged him to do that. He engaged his mentor. He told, even though, you know, he, he was, I think he was concerned because he had gotten an extension and he didn't really know what to do. And so we talked about that and how the support is not just him. He's not by himself. I, you know, we are supporting him, but also his mentor wants him to be successful. And when he approached his mentor with that, you know, idea that, oh, you, um, could I have your help? Could I get your opinion? What are your thoughts here? This is the material. Um, can I have some help? He realized that that was the story that, Everyone was really involved in his success. And he came back. He not only passed the course, he got a really good grade in the course. His mentor was, he, he engaged his mentor. His mentor was like, thank you, you've done such a great job. And he came back to me and he told me that he was really happy and he couldn't have done it without me. And I told him, it's an us thing. <laughs> it, was, it was all his hard work. It was the support I got from our team and 
that he was willing to come forward on those different days and just work. And so that just warms my heart because it is about all of us. We are a community. And I know that's my thread, but that is my thread. I love meeting people, engaging with them, learning from them, and hopefully giving them a little something when, you know, tools to be successful as they move along. So thank that, you. Was, that was it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. I mean, we we never realize the small impacts that we make. And that's just a great testimony of how this program is essential to support our students. Um, all right, we'll transition to Sherry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Steve will know that that it, it may it's important to me to to connect with those students and make a difference. And not too long after the program started. Um, we had a situation that's probably one of the most scariest, but yet um, still sticks in my mind. We had a student post on the social media app about harming themselves. And um, it was after hours. It was weekend. I happened to have it pop up as a student on my phone. And I immediately tried to reach out to Steve and what could we do? And with Steve's help and some other resources within Thomas Edison, we were able to locate the student, ensure their safety. Um, my background in healthcare tells me to always take these kind of things serious regardless. And so um, the student came back later, thanked me for the, the connection, for the help, for the engagement. And he and I have exchanged messages a little bit throughout my my time with Thomas Edison and he is doing well and continues to prosper but that's the difference that we can make you know that that community that that Tanya speaks of and that wellness and and total care that Ivanka spoke up as well you know you don't think as a as a college uh, peer mentor that that might be what you're going to encounter but we did and um, I think we handled it well and I think that student will forever be grateful that we were available for them. Thank you so much, Sherry, and we we tremendously appreciate you being there and then advocating for this student by reaching out to Steve, um, and I know the student is appreciative as well. Um, just really bringing all the pieces together, knowing the value that we're bringing here to our students. So we'll transition um, to our next question. What words of wisdom would you offer to a student to take advantage of this program? We'll start with Tanya. Oh, this one was easy. This is easy for me. Get out of your head. <laughs> Don't worry about what people will think if you ask for help. I know this personally because I've always had that kind of, I should know this. Shouldn't I know this? How do I figure this out? And throughout my life, you know, it's worked out well, but throughout my life, I realized that I could have just reached out and, in, and asked for help. My mother and I would have this conversation and it was such, I, I, it, it's defined my adult life and asking for help. I remember she would, she would never ever, um, you know, I'd get her a present for Christmas and she would get me a present, but she would always kind of cherish the present, present and not use it. And one of the things I said to her is she's like, don't get anything for me. You, you know, I want to give it to you. And he's like, mom, part of life, part of the joy of this is me seeing you enjoy it, me seeing you receive it. And we never really think of help that way, do we? Uh, some of us do. But one of the things that changed in my life was that when I started thinking about when I ask for help, I'm also helping the person feel good because they want to help me. So there is, and I can tell you, everyone who's here who might take advantage of meeting with us, I can tell you that these other coaches are fantastic. There is, I would go, I go to them <laughs> when I need help because their hearts are so kind and so open. And the only thing they want to do is help. And there is never a situation that we don't want to help you with. We want to, we may not be able to help you directly. We may have to ask for help as Sherry mentioned, but the thing is 
we want you to, to be successful. We want to uh, a value of what we've learned. And so ask for help. Ask for, even if you don't know what you need help with, you just have a feeling, just engage. And, and you will be surprised how much support you'll be able to get. Thank you so much. I mean, I, you, you've indicated some level of vulnerability for our students in asking for help. That requires vulnerability. And then a part of your, your reciprocation of what you're getting, a sign of love is essentially active service is what you're giving and providing a response and supporting them in your example for your mother. Um, and so we'll transition to Yavanka. Okay. Well, I have no cliches or no, there's no academic formula for and no one size fits all. But just know that this, this journey will encompass hard work. They will need grit and tenacity. But the most important thing is I would like the participants and everyone listening who will listen to this to know that they're not alone on this on this experience. That the peers, the peer coaches may not have all of the answers, but we will get them and we will find out and we will provide it for you. We will stay in touch and we will follow up, but it's part of that community of practice. It's part of that reciprocal relationship building the same way that we encourage our students to reach out to their mentors and talk to their mentors. It's, it is the same way works in reverse, but we are here. And we will reinforce the grit and the tenacity that that will, that is needed for this journey. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Yolanda. All right, our last question. Based on what you've seen and heard so far, what would you like to see this? How would you like to see this program grow? And what needs could be better addressed? We will start with Sherry. I'm going to talk more technical, probably. Um, first of all, from a coach's perspective, there are some technical barriers for us um, with being able to demonstrate things in a course for a student. So I come from my healthcare background. We had what we called a training environment or a playground. So it would be nice if Moodle had that that same ability where we had a course that we could actually go in and I know Steve is working on something for us now but that we could actually go in and look and view it just like a student sees it and mm -hmm. show them a live demonstration on how to attach things or or locate information because as we transition out of being a student and graduate a lot of our courses disappear and some of those things that we could use as demonstration tools are no longer available for us. Also, um, another thing that comes to mind is if there's a possibility for us to actually have access to the what courses a student is taking and actually go into those courses. I know that's probably another type of level of security and Steve and I've talked a little bit about that where we could actually go in and see who their mentor is or see their specific assignments or their specific syllabus so that when they are not able, some are not, even though they're taking online, they may not be quite as tech savvy. And so when you're trying to, through Zoom, trying to have a conversation and say, click here, click there, sometimes it'd be easier if we could demonstrate for them. Um, we also use a program that's not so easy for them to schedule appointments. So if there was eventually a platform that makes it a little bit easier for them to connect and, and make appointments with us, that would be nice. And then from the student's perspective, I think we need to be more visible. I think there's ways we can do that. I think one, it, it might even be embedding us in their courses, a link in their courses, or maybe even mentors um, when they do their initial course announcements also introducing us in that beginning of that term and giving our information a little blurb about us and how to connect. I think that's going to touch even more students than we presently are. Um, Tanya and Yavanka both have referenced that, you know, this is not traditional learning environment. So most of our communication comes through email and people are inundated with a lot of email. And so I think they miss things. So I think that if we were kind of in that beginning stage of their term and an announcement from the mentor, I think that would be very beneficial. 
And so that's more from a technical side of some of the things I think we could do to make it work a little better for our students. Perfect. And Sherry, I got a little ahead of myself. I didn't get your response. What words of wisdom would you have to offer our students? Um, well, first of all, it's free. Um, there's not much in life that's free. So I always say take advantage of the free. But you're also going to get from us um, that we've walked that walk or we're currently walking that walk and we have that experience. So we're going to provide you a different perspective. And I think that would be beneficial. We're also going to be your biggest cheerleaders. And the other coaches can tell you when they um, attend the new student webinar. That's one of the things I talk about. We are not just here for the technical things. We're here, you know, if you need to chat, you need to vent. If you're frustrated, we're going to be here to listen. We are going to be your community, as Tanya says. We are your TSU family. And then finally, they get to work with all of us. And so I want to toot our horns a little bit. We all come from different backgrounds. We have a lot to offer. And I think that they are going to learn things from us that will carry them through their entire academic career, helping them reach their goals. But ho hopefully, even beyond, they'll remember us as, as Yvonka said, her mentors. She remembers them, and they'll take them on into their career. Thank you so much, Sherry. All right, we'll transition to Yavanka to answer the question of, based on what you've seen and heard so far, what have what would you like to see in the program in regards to growing, and what needs do we need to better address? Um, from a college-wide perspective, have making sure the mentors know about us, making their resource page and their syllabus maybe having a link or a blurb that this is a resource for the students. You know how like we put tutoring services, wellness services, financial aid contact, that having um, us embedded in our syllabus, making sure the mentors are well and understand what this program offers and how we could support and augment their, their experience as well in the, with the student. And that uh, everyone needs to understand that we're all retention specialists. Um, we're all retention specialists, so it doesn't just start in the classroom. It, it starts way before the student gets to the seat or the online platform. We all need to be a part of this as well. Uh, also, um, a couple of my students, they, as Sherry uh, had mentioned, they get a little frustrated with appointment setting thing. They can just barely figure out the email. So then they always ask, well, uh, can, I don't want to do a Zoom. I'm having trouble. So can, can you call me? Or, you know, do you all have text ability? So maybe some of those technologies, I don't know, again, the whole technology component or, or, or level of security component, but a couple of students that I've had to call, I just block my number and I'll call them and they just seem to love that, um, especially with some of my older non-traditional students, um, that works better for them. And just calling and checking up, how are you doing? You know, how do you do with that course? They seem to like that. So, and, and finally, just, as a as a uh, as a university on this initiative of increased engagement, I'm um, just keeping the momentum going for the services and building them out and understanding that our students are not just popping in and out. They they want to talk about other things. As I said before, although they are taking online courses, they are still a whole student. You know, they're just not in a classroom, but they still need some of the other services that a so-called traditional student would need. Thank you so much, and Tanya. Yes, I can't emphasize enough everything that both Yavanka and Sherry said, especially um, the barriers sometimes for helping the students with their courses directly. There's a lot of times that we're searching and then we're, we're um, chatting each other to see, have you taken that course? Do you know this mentor? Um, I remember one time just even trying to get the mentor's email address escalated. We had to escalate it and uh, because the student was locked out of her account. So things like that, giving us a little bit more access is really important. I also agree with the mentors having knowledge of us beforehand and having, like, like Yavanka said, having um, maybe our information embedded in their syllabus or having some type of information available as each student starts a course. Um, I'll go back to the technical side again. 
again, emphasizing that making an appointment, we lost a couple of students for a, a week or so because they kept going to smart thinking, tutoring, and then they're saying they're not giving us the kind of service that you said we, uh, they didn't want to talk about anything, you know, they just wanted to tutor. So just thinking about um, things like that, making it a little more streamlined. Um, and I also, I feel that it's, I, I keep saying this about community. I would love to have something, um, you know, I've been using Zoom, we've used Zoom, we use Teams, whatever the students are comfortable with. As Yvonka said, you know, sometimes there's a call, texting. Um, I would love it if we could, as some part of some type of orientation, just say, you know, let us know how you like to be contacted so that when we engage with the student, we already have that because I know a lot of the emails are, how do you, hi, you need this help. What do you need help with? Okay. How can I contact you? When can I contact you? Which way should I contact you? Um, if that was kind of set up beforehand, it would be really, oh, this person only likes phone calls. And maybe once you talk to them, they, they you can help them with Zoom or something like that. But the initial contact, that would be really helpful. Just knowing that. Um, yeah, I think, I think as we expand, I would also like to see um, some more, uh, this goes with coaching and tutoring, because as I said, I think we all end up doing a little bit of both. We're coaches, but sometimes you end up, whether it's helping them learn how to do something that's more business, I am setting up a schedule, I'm doing these kinds of things. If we had a little more breadth in what we uh, can do for a student or the skill sets that we can bring in, additional coaches or tutors that, um, from my perspective, because my degree is technical, I feel that there's not as much help if you're coming from that perspective. Um, it's, this is in, this, that we're in our nascent stages and I think we have done 100% great job in expanding in the way we have. Uh, and and definitely the feedback from the students has been excellent. It's been it's been great. Um, we've learned a lot, and I I love the fact that our team is so responsive. Something happens, and then we all talk about it, and we figure out how to serve that student or the community of students that's needed. So I think we as as long as we continue to have that agility, we'll be able to expand in the way that we need to to serve our students. Thank you guys for your wonderful explanations and your responses. Um, I, I know we're still in our um, infancy stage of this program. And as you guys have indicated in your, in your responses is, it's been agile. So we've been learning through the process. Um, and, and as you guys know, we've seen some uptick between January and April because of our constant agility to make changes as we learn. Um, so I know those are all of our questions. I wanted to give the audience an opportunity to ask any questions that you guys have. Um, one question came in, can we please detail the ways that are um, in place right now for students to communicate to the mentors. The reason why we're asking is because I thought students can communicate with peer mentors through smart thinking and in Moodle. Steve, would you want to answer that question? Sure. So um, to start, when we invite a student to the program, they receive an invitation. Um, so all, and by now, all undergraduate students in active courses um, should have access to our program. As I stated earlier in the introduction, um, it's, it's there, um, it, it appears as a course to them. Um, we have outreaches throughout the terms um, to a variety of the students. Um, for example, we have separate outreach for at risk. Uh, we have separate outreach for brand new students. And then we have separate outreach just for the general, all students. Um, so smart thinking, not to be confused. So we do use smart thinking traditional services where smart thinking tutors help our students. Uh, however, uh, we, we have a separate contract with smart thinking where we actually put in our peer coaches and our peer tutors in the platform. It's like a separate instance of the platform. Um, and that's on our actual uh, peer support page. So students would use that um, to make an appointment. So that's how they would um, 
that's how they would get in touch with our with our mentors. But on, on the peer support page, not only can you make an appointment that way, you can just email us, you can post on our forums as well. So we have another question regarding what kind of information can we give to mentors to talk about the program? I know Steve and, Steve and the mentors or the peer support team have talking points that can be drafted. Um, and I, I want to say this, we, we've been mindful of how far we've been launching and communicating um, because we went from a, a slow launch in regards to the involvement of how many students because we didn't know how much engagement and we still are mindful that's where this program is is on a grant fund. And so right now we're in the part, part process of essentially identifying the impact. And as these three wonderful individuals indicated, they've had great impact. And so we're working to make sure the data actually indicates that as, as, as well um, to answer one of those questions. So uh, more to come with the program from a continuous improvement and a continuous learning process. Do we have any more questions? I would just state, uh, there might be some confusion, I'm not sure in the questions, but um, keep in mind, our, we initially named our, our um, coaches peer mentors, and I think there's some confusion with a course mentor and a peer mentor, so that's why we changed it to peer coaches. I, I just wanted to be clear with that. I'm not sure if there's some confusion in the question, so our course mentors are obviously completely different. Um, the, three on, the three on the call are our peer coaches as part of the peer support team. So we had a follow up question. So the program currently being offered is only for undergraduate students um, initially, uh, and that was based on the funding in which we applied for the grant was to focus on at risk populations. And so in the beginning, we focused on initial at risk population and the engagement wasn't as high because the population was as large. And so throughout the process of getting to today, we've expanded to the entire undergraduate population to all active students. Um, and that should have answered the following question. So as we continue to learn, I imagine um, we may be able to do a phase two of this if we're able to get funding to focus on graduate students as well. And again, that outreach, um, we, we actually break it down into the, the separate uh, types of students. Again, the, the higher at risk students, you know, they may be uh, struggling in their courses. We actually have separate outreach for them. Um, and our brand new students, we have completely separate outreach for to just make sure they're doing okay, especially early on in the term. Uh, and then we do have outreach that goes out to everyone. Perfect. All right. Um, I, so the response to the last question that just came in, we have funding into September 20. 23. So next year during this time, um, with the anticipation that we get funding to continue to move this forward, but the original um, grant that was funded ends in September 23. Um, Michael indicated, this has been a great session showing the new work we're engaged in response to the, today's adult learners. As we think about the growth of this program, where do we see it going? How does it fit in the overall retention strategy we've been implementing in the past year? So great question, Michael. Um, essentially, this is, um, I call it another piece of the pie. And so we've done a lot um, in regards to thinking about the life cycle of the student. We launched the orientation in April and which the peer um, support team have been able to they actually reviewed the course and provided feedback. And so that was prior to the lunch to provide an insight on the onboarding of the course. In addition to that, um, we wrote out specific communications cadence with the advising team to look at specific students um, that are not engaged within um, from a term by term perspective of not engaging a week or two within a course. And also we've also been able to um, roll out a transition in the LMS, which allow for us, our uh, students to get real-time grades, which allow for us to be able to develop triggers to be able to identify when students were not being successful in courses. And so now we have a specific communication cadence that focuses on students that are not doing well in courses of 7.3 or below. Um, and so all of these items are just continue to be a piece of the puzzle. And as we learn and look at the data, we are essentially making modifications. We're leveraging our advice to send out automated communications. We're doing specific outreach for students that are not 
engage um, and as they respond um, we're working with all these teams to make sure that none of the work is duplicate but a supplemental part of all the pieces as we move forward and and so as another the Dr. another Jackson, can i jump in just for a moment yes i know i said i was going to stay quiet and i know i said i was going to keep my camera off and i did them both really well except of course i was um texting back and forth with the provost saying how excited i am about this um, and I'm hoping, I know that we have Leanne just on the comment on the funding. I know we have Leanne on the call. I was looking at the attendees. And if I know her at all, she's thinking about, okay, how, how do we take this and make it into an ask um, for another grant? Because the work that you're doing, and I love your agility comment, um, just, and I, and I love the community of learning about our students and trying to solve it, not in one silo, but then saying, okay, wait, if one student has this, what are we learning from it as an organization? How do we help? Um, so I just want to put that out there that I, I think this work is fantastic. I realize it's in its infancy stage um, and we're trying new things and trying to find out how we serve. Um, my guess is everybody on this call, especially folks within our student services and enrollment and retention and recruitment are thinking, well, wow, how do we put this out for everybody? Um, and, and I know we can't quite get there yet, but I want to share that I, this is a fantastic session. Um, I'm, I'm learning just listening to to what our peer mentors are learning about our students and thinking about what we need. So I just wanted to pipe in real fast and say that um, I, you guys are doing a fantastic job. And this this is an exciting we were at a really nice event with a bunch of friends from Thomas Edison um, last night. And I wish I would have watched this first because I mentioned the program, but I would have loved to be able to talk a little bit more about it. So now I really will go back off and mute and let you get to question and answers. Thank you. Perfect. So a final question that we have that came in essentially was, is this just for at-risk populations? For clarification, when we originally applied for the grant, um, essentially the focus was for at-risk adult learners. And so essentially we started off with a focus of at-risk students based on our historical analysis of data of students that are one were successful here at the university. And so because the population was smaller and engagement was as high as we wanted to, we expanded it to the whole entire population because we could, because we essentially included adult learners, which is essentially are all of our students. So that was the caveat and support Supporting our students. So all students that are actively enrolled every term actually get access to this um, support population and they're added to a specific course within Moodle and which receives specific announcements of updates on our pre-term webinar and our post-term webinar um, in relation to things that we've moved forward. So I want to echo um, what Dr. Hancock has indicated as we appreciate each one of our um, peer support members. And I wanna also highlight that we also have additional people that are on the team that weren't able to make it today because they have full-time jobs um, like these um, support members, but weren't able, they had conflicts. And so we wanna thank those people that are, are absent because they are part of this community and this family as well. And so um, just final closing thoughts, thank everyone for attending the sessions. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to email peer support at tesu.edu. In the words of Yavanka, we are all retention specialists. In the words of Mahatma Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Thank you guys, and we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank everyone. you. Thank you. Thank you all.